an unprecedented move that's paving the way for Xi Jinping to rule China for life. The 69-year-old just securing a historic third term as the head of the country's ruling party. We must be highly vigilant in the face of new challenges, she sang Sunday during a short speech at the end of the week-long Congress, the most important meeting of the ruling Chinese Communist Party's five-year political cycle involving more than 2,300 delegates. I think uh, Xi Jinping is setting himself up for lifetime tenure. This expert on Chinese politics at the University of California, San Diego, telling CNN Xi's concentration of power and newly revealed all-male top governing body stacked with loyalists has no clear successor on the horizon. And while Xi's iron grip on power will likely provide stability in the short term, there are big questions looking ahead, especially given his age. Remember, this China is the second largest economy in the world and actually has the largest financial system in the world um, by asset under management by banks uh, and the stock market. So, um, you know, this kind of one man rule and the entire stability and prosperity of the country, depending on one person, um, over time is going to generate some uncertainties. There are also lingering questions about this bizarre moment Saturday. Xi's predecessor was unexpectedly escorted off the stage and appeared to resist. State media and China's heavily censored social media platforms not sharing the footage. But there were local reports the sudden exit was due to poor health. We really have not seen any kind of disruption to the proceedings like this um, pretty much ever. I'm not a believer of the pure health explanation uh, just because the last formal task that Hu Jintao had to perform was to vote for the new Central Committee, which he did uh, minutes before this event took place. Uh, and if he had been feeling unwell, they could have, after his voting, they could have uh, whisked him away and, and give him medical care. Uh, but yet he sat down, He and it seemed like he sat down in a pretty stable manner. Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, among the first world leaders to congratulate Xi. Melissa Duggan, City News. Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm Jesse Fuchs here in the Sportsnet newsroom. The Maple Leafs are in Las Vegas right now. Sounds nice. They're preparing to take on the Golden Knights tomorrow. We'll take a look back at their win against the Jets last night in the peg, and it's a big day in the MLB playoffs. Philly is trying to advance to the World Series. That game just ended. I have the latest update, and Felix Oje al yassim is a winner again. Highlights coming your way next.
I'm Jesse Fuchs here with a Sportsnet Central update. The Toronto Maple Leafs are getting to spend their Sunday in lovely Las Vegas. They take on the Golden Knights tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Now the Buds were in Winnipeg last night and picked up a big win over the Jets. As away we go here on Hockey Night in Canada. And a chance in front. Tavares scores. It's a power play goal. And the game is tied. Wayne Simmons got in behind the defense, scores! David Camp, and the Leafs' fourth line has given Toronto the lead. Matthews up top, scores! Fired that in to Tavares. Tavares with a pair from in tight. And the Leafs with a 4-1 win here in Winnipeg. That's right. Meanwhile, the Raptors are off today after losing to Miami yesterday. However, they are staying in South Beach because they take on the heat again on Monday night. You can watch that game on Sportsnet 360. Tip-off is set for 7.30 p.m. And last night's game between the Raptors and Heat got very, very feisty. More on that story coming up in just a moment. But for now, let's focus on baseball. By the end of the night, we could know who is going to play in the World Series. The Astros will try to sweep away the Yankees coming up later this evening. Now, there is rain in the area. The start of that game was supposed to be for 7 o'clock. It's going to be delayed, and the game could even be postponed. But this afternoon, this game did get played. Game 5 of the NLCS, Phillies trying to eliminate the Padres. And this game got... Very interesting. Now, Philadelphia hasn't made it to the World Series since 2009. The fans are ready, and they would love this. A scoreless game until Reese Hoskins steps to the plate in the third inning. A green light and a shot. Reese Hoskins owning October. 2-0 Phils. Reese Hoskins, a two-run blast. He has three homers in his last six at-bats. 2-0 Philly. Top four, Juan Soto does respond for the Padres. He has home runs in back-to-back -back games. He can walk because he knows this one is long gone. Solo blast cuts the lead down to one. Then in the seventh with the game now tied at two, Philadelphia reliever Sir Anthony Dominguez, oops, uncorks the wild pitch. His third of the inning. A runner scores as the Padres take a 3-2 lead, but they could not hang on. Just a few minutes ago in the bottom of the eighth inning, Bryce Harper at the plate, and he plays hero, hitting perhaps the biggest home run of his life. A two-run shot gives Philly the lead, and this game is now over. Phillies win 4-3. They are off to the World Series. And in tennis news, Felix Oje al yassim looking for his second straight ATP title, third of his career. He was taking on American Sebastian Corda in the European Open final. First set on serve, Oje al yassim nice little backhand slice drop shot, gives him a chance to break. Next point, Corda decides to come to the net. It's a really bad decision because Felix hits a great forehand oh, passing yes. shot down the line. He breaks and takes the first set, six to three. Second set, tied at twos off a long rally. OJ Aliasim gets to just smash this one home. That leads to a break as we move to championship point and Corda is going to make it really easy on him because he hits it right into the net. OJ Aliasim wins his third career title, second in as many weeks. He is the 2022 European Open champion. And I'll have lots more coming up for you later in the hour. Of course, it's Sunday. We're going to talk NFL football. Are the Giants good? And is Tom Brady no longer good? We'll have that discussion later in the hour. It was an emotional night in Miami on Saturday. The Raptors playing their first of two games against the Heat here in Miami. The game saw rookie Christian Coloco ejected as well as Caleb Martin from the Miami Heat from this altercation. He gets knocked down and oh my, they go into the seats. Caleb Martin and Christian Ocolo right in front of the Heat bench. Oh, this is not a good looking scene. Oh, and the whole Heat bench is, has been vacated. You want to give us your version of uh, what happened? Uh, I mean, I feel like everybody saw what happened. You know, I got fouled and I fell, and I don't know why he was trying to do it. And I just, you know, stood out for myself and I got ejected. So that's what happened. Did, did he say anything? Like, why did he come over? Had you guys? I was, I was as confused as you. I don't know. I have no idea. I was just, I just, he just stood out looking at me like crazy. I was like, I just stood up. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Do you feel like he? 
pushed you out of bounds or was too hard in doing that? I mean, when he fouled me, yeah. he, he was basically grabbing me and pushing me. So I don't know, and I felt I don't know what I was going to do. I'm not. I'm confused. I'm confused. He stood over you right away. Yeah, I don't know why. Like I don't. I don't even know him, so I don't know what was going on to his head. But. It didn't only get heated between the players. It also got a little spicy between the fans. Miami fans. They say they're going to win both games. That's a joke. First of all, win both games. Come on now. Like that's not going to happen. How are you feeling about this series? Do you think Miami's going to win? Yeah, Miami's going to win. If they lose, I'm not going to be a Heat fan anymore. You know, the Heat are a bandwagon city, right? Since LeBron left town. Nobody really cares about the heat, so. All I can say to them is good luck. Good luck. Good luck. We wish you the best, but we're here. I'm not worried at all. They should be so scared. We're coming for you. You guys are going to lose. Oh, we're going to kill you tonight. <laughs> I mean, they live in Canada. There's no such thing as Canada to us uh, Miami fans. There's not too much of a break between these two teams. The Raptors will be back on the court here in Miami against the Heat on Monday. Reporting for City News for Miami, I'm Lindsay Dunn. Next on City News. The hunt is on for suspects after two early morning shootings on opposite ends of the city sent two men to hospital. Details on the investigation coming up next on City News. It's your city. It's your vote. And on Monday, you've got three ways to watch it count. You can head to citynews.ca, City News 24 7 on Prime Video, or check us out on Rogers Ignite at Channel 100. Full coverage begins on all platforms starting at 8 p.m. On city streets tonight, two men are recovering in hospital after a pair of overnight shootings. Shots rang out on Pearl Street in the Entertainment District about 3 o'clock Sunday morning. When officers arrived on scene, they located a man with gunshot wounds. He was taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. 
Less than 30, uh, 90 minutes later, police were called to the area of Jane Street and Shoreham Drive near York University for sounds of gunshots. Another man was located with gunshot wounds. He was taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police have yet to release suspect information on either incident. Anyone with information is being asked to come forward. Meantime, investigators have identified the victim of the city's latest homicide. Just before 1 a.m. Saturday, officers responded to a call for unknown trouble in the Queen Street West and Portland Street area. Officers located a man with life-threatening gunshot wounds. Despite emergency measures, he was pronounced dead on scene. The victim has been identified as 38-year-old Peter Alexandros Medimenos of Toronto. Police have yet to release information on suspects or what might have led up to the shooting. The Homicide and Missing Persons Unit has taken over the investigation. Welcome to Pumpkinville. We are in one of the parking lots here at Sherway Gardens. This has been transformed into a fall wonderland. And I'm here with one of the event coordinators, Oliveira. You've got to tell me about this. This is so much fun. I know it's, it's such a great vibe here. It is just the best fall vibe and you feel hugged by fall being here. Oh, I love that. I hear, is this true, 25,000 real pumpkins here? Uh, actually, we're up to over 35,000 real pumpkins. It's unbelievable. So we've got sculptures, we've got rides, we've got foods. What's your favorite thing to do here? What do we need to do next? The pumpkin smash. It is so much fun. And I think we have smashed more pumpkins than we have sold the people have taken home. It's been so much fun. There's a pumpkin smash. Can I do this? Absolutely. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> I am going to be doing that in about 20 minutes from now. But let's get you our forecast. Thank you so much for joining us. We are dealing with warmth. That's an understatement at this point. This area of high pressure has been sitting over Ontario for quite some time. And as a result, we are seeing daytime highs in the 20s. Windsor, yeah, it was feeling like summer. 24 degrees was our high there today. Tonight, we're dropping down to a low of 7. And just be mindful, after midnight, we are seeing some fog move into the region. So you might want to give yourself a little bit of extra time if you're leaving early tomorrow. Because pre-dawn, that fog is going to be sticking around. Waking up tomorrow to sunshine and six degrees that fog should lift by about seven or eight a.m and this is a sign of good things to come into the afternoon we've got that sunshine sticking around lakeside we're going to be in the mid-teens away from the lake again we're looking at daytime highs in the 20s peterborough you're in the 20 club barry you too blue mountain at 22 degrees 21 in kitchener not bad at all it's all about the layers, though, because as we move into the evening, it is going to get a little bit cooler. In terms of our wind speed, very light in the morning into the afternoon. You really won't feel it too much, but because it is that lake breeze, it's going to be a little bit cooler lakeside, like I mentioned. Winds are going to be fairly light right through Wednesday. Thursday is when they pick back up and change direction, and here's why. We've got a front that's going to be moving through Wednesday afternoon. It's going to bring rain to southern Ontario, some snow and mixing to the north, and then a major shift in the wind direction. A northwest low on Thursday is really going to cool us down. Before that happens, generally about 5 to 10 millimeters of rain expected Wednesday afternoon through Thursday morning. But we'll clear out on the day Thursday. But those northwest winds, especially during the morning, you're going to feel them with gusts 40 to 60 kilometers an hour and a major temperature drop. We're back to seasonal by Thursday with a daytime high of just 11 degrees, but we've got lots of sunshine through Friday and Saturday, 12 degrees next weekend. That is right where we should be. And while it is cooling down tonight, it's all it's warm in this tent and we are going to be, as you heard, smashing some pumpkins coming up soon. From Pumpkin Fest, I'm Michelle Mackey. This was a scene in Hyde Park today. Dozens of residents bringing flowers and lighting candles at a memorial for a rally for the victims of a devastating crash in the city's east end last year. On October 21st, 2021, 71-year-old Vladimir Avalaman and his wife, 69-year-old Fatima, were stopped in traffic when their Toyota was hit by a BMW traveling southbound on Parkside Drive at a high rate of speed. The couple's daughter is calling on the city to do more to protect residents in the area. They were good people and they came to Canada with with nothing but a suitcase in their hand and they built a life in Canada like most people and most immigrants do and they didn't deserve to die the way that they did. They did. Anything that would have prevented my parents death that day 
Anything that would have prevented a speeding driver flying down Parkside Drive would have prevented my parents' death. And I think the city needs to be held to account to that as well. Residents are calling on council to install photo radar and completely redesign Parkside Drive, which they say continues to be a hot spot for speeding. A 38-year-old man was charged with two counts of criminal negligence causing death. Next on City News. A Ukrainian apartment block rocked by suspected Russian missiles. The growing struggle in urban areas as Moscow's tactics shift. Russia's war coming to the front door for these Ukrainians in the southern port city of Mykolaiv. Residents of this heavily damaged apartment building sifting through the broken pieces of their home Sunday. I was sleeping right here when I heard a loud explosion, this man says. Moments later, there was a second loud blast. Giving a tour of what remains, he describes his door being blown into the hallway. The explosion was so strong, he says, the walls are crumbling. The local mayor writing online that several Russian missiles hit the city overnight. No deaths reported here. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky saying in his nightly video update that Russia had launched strikes on infrastructure on a very wide scale this weekend. The capital, Kyiv, among the places experiencing ongoing power outages. Blackouts now scheduled here to conserve resources. Moscow's invasion disrupting the supply of energy and water as Russian forces are suffering setbacks on the battlefield. And ahead of an expected fight for Russian-held territory in Kherson, Moscow continuing its evacuation efforts, warning of a looming Ukrainian offensive to recapture the city. To Siberia, that's where a Russian fighter plane crashed into a residential building Sunday, killing its two pilots. The area's governor says no residents were hurt. 
Russia says the aircraft was on a test flight, and a criminal probe is underway into violations of air safety rules. This is the second fatal incident involving a Russian fighter plane in less than a week. Melissa Duggan, City News.